You tell me you're scared. You tell me you're weak. But I know you're stronger than what you think. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. It's an engaging and enlightening talk show on life, relationships, and the business of life. Grab a cup of juice and just chill. Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. Live life. Live fully. You are now tuned in to this week's episode of our podcast. Today we are going to interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in our field. By sharing our collective expertise, we will show you how to harness, control, and use your own skill set to achieve ultimate success and live the life you want. And now, please welcome your host. Thank you for joining me once again. My name is Amabala Steven and welcome to Love Well Lived by Amabala Steven. I'm not alone on my show today. I have an amazing guest with me and she has a lot to talk about on health and wellness, more especially functional medicine. I know you want to hear more about this. Now, if you want to catch up with some of my missed episodes, simply go online and search for Love Well Lived by Amabala Steven on any podcast distribution platforms and I guarantee you a work while listening experience as you do so. Perhaps you can catch up with me on my social media handles on my Twitter handle at Amabala Elise on Facebook page, Blue Buttons Communications Network, so on my Facebook account on Mobile as Steven, perhaps on my Instagram page, Mobile underscore S, on my LinkedIn page, on Mobile as Steven. Now, I have Alison Westridge, who help people resolve health issues with a holistic approach using functional medicine. She's also the co-host of the Cancer Recovery Podcast. Now, Alison will be talking about functional medicine, health and wellness, and all there is to know. Welcome with me on Live Well by Mobile as Steven, Alison Westridge. Hello, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming to the show. So can you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Allison, and um, I have been a practicing physician assistant since 2004 and um, also had cancer when I was 20. So it's been, I'm 44 now, so I've been 24 years since my cancer diagnosis. And that really led me into wanting to help people in that field. And so I ended up working in the field of oncology, which is adult cancer patients for about 10 years with actually, I worked with my oncologist that treated me. So that was really special. Um, And then I found myself Mm -hmm. having some more health problems come along and was really starting to learn more about nutrition and something called gut health, which is uh, really all these trillions of bacteria that live in our gut that really make us healthy or unhealthy. Um, and just learning more about the body and how the root causes of illness. And so I started working on those things with myself and was able to reverse my autoimmune condition that was coming up with the thyroid issue and started working in that field of functional medicine and really, really enjoyed it because, you know, while traditional medicine is really good at kind of treating illness, functional medicine is more rooted in what's causing us to be sick and how can we work on our lifestyle and our nutrition and other things to reverse our illness and prevent future illness. And so that really resonated with me because I'm someone who's, who never really liked to take a bunch of medicine anyway. I always wanted to know why is this happening? Why am I sick? What, what can I do? And there's a lot that we can do, which is for, for me, it gives me a lot of hope for our future and our health, because if we're told that there's nothing we can do, then, you know, we're just going to get sicker and sicker, but, um, but kind of having that hope and and being able to empower now my clients, um, helping them figure out what is their triggers, what's causing their symptoms and and being able to resolve that is really life-changing for people. And so, you know, now I've been home a couple of years with my own health consulting business and I, and I focus on it you know, kind of lifestyle for sure, because we're all stressed and sleep deprived and dehydrated and maybe not eating the right foods. But I also look deeper 
at helping people figure out what underlying things are going on that are contributing to their symptoms and, and just helping them, you know, put the pieces together and, and get a plan for them so they can kind of feel good and reverse, reverse their symptoms and prevent future illness. So that's, that's kind of what I do now. Oh, great. And thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Now, um, what is the Cancer Recovery Podcast now? Is there any inspiration behind it? Yeah, so I actually partnered with a colleague. We went to the PA school together, and she also has worked in oncology most of her career. And so we both are very holistic-minded, um, very, you know, wanting to help people with, you know, with their cancer diagnosis and after cancer because, having gone through all the treatment for cancer myself, your body is really depleted. Chemotherapy is a poison. I mean, it, it, it serves a purpose to treat the cancer, but it really wrecks your body. And, and I found that whenever I was done with my cancer treatment, and then of course our patients were done with their cancer treatment, there wasn't any kind of aftercare plan to help them rebuild their health or know what maybe caused their cancer. And so you're kind of left with a bunch of mental health problems because you're fearful of cancer recurrence. Mm -hmm. You're worried about why did this happen? You're, you don't feel good because your, your body is depleted. And so the podcast was kind of born out of our desire to help that population thrive after cancer. I mean, we've, you know, we've gone through this horrific illness. So we're like mm -hmm. warrior, we're like warriors, really. We're not survivors we're you know we beat something really crazy and really hard that's right, so that's right. we, we want to thrive we want to be better after that and 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 so that's our goal and so our podcast really focuses on that population of course it can be applied to anyone anyone can that's benefit right. from you know sleeping tips right. so, you know we, we focus on things that you can incorporate in your lifestyle like we, one of our episodes is just all about water and how important that is. And then we talk about vitamin D and then we've, we've talked about me meditation and mindset and, you know, and then we, we have guests on as well. Um, mm. So, you know, and so we, that's kind of what we do. And so we have a new episode every week and then, uh, you know, alongside of that, eventually we, but we both hope to kind of have a in-person, hopefully one day, an in-person mm. retreat or in-person program or group programs that we can do for people that are wanting to really um, ramp up their health after their treatment has ended. So yeah, we've, we've really mm, enjoyed <laughs> Brilliant guide on your podcast. Now, what discoveries have you found regarding functional medicine to prevention and also we, um, wellness? Do you have any to share? Yeah. So, so for me, you know, when I started learning about functional medicine, it, it really comes down to kind of some key areas. And so of course, you know, in general, just as a population, a lot of us don't sleep enough or we don't sleep well. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of food, but is it, but the food that's easy access is not always nutrient dense. Um, we also have this big global problem of, um, chemicals and pesticides and what I call toxins, which are just all these things lurking around in our cleaning products and our personal care products. Um, and, you know, so, so those are kind of like the big ones, the big triggers for people are, um, are going to be things like not sleeping well, um, not drinking enough water. And of course, stress is another big area. Stress is big. And you know, stress causes a lot of problems with our digestion yeah, and our we didn't talk about stress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so much, yeah. right? Especially now. I mean, this last That's year right. has been really bad, really stressful for a lot of people. And you know, so we have to find a way to really dig in and and, and learn how to rest. <laughs> And, and learn how to be still. And we're so plugged in all the time with electronics and the TV and the phone, iPhones, and that we really no have. To, yeah, <laughs> our, our brain doesn't rest. And, and if our brain doesn't rest, then we're not going to rest and we're not going to be able to reset and, and really heal. I mean, um, you know, getting our stress under control translates into better sleep as well. And so 
oftentimes it's kind of these lifestyle things that are contributing to our illness. Um, and then of course, you know, mm. medications can contribute. I mean, I know I had my fair share of antibiotics <laughs> growing up and that really affected my gut health. And so when you think about functional medicine, gut health is a really big piece of that. And you can, gut health has become, has been a topic in the last probably 20 years, because there's a lot more research now coming out about the gut microbiome and its relation to health and wellness. And so that's a big area I focus on with people as well, because if we're not digesting our food properly, we're not absorbing our nutrients and we, we're not feeding our gut bacteria the, the good plant-based fiber that they need to thrive, then it's going to make us overall sick and, and, and not have the nutrients we need for our basic functions of our thyroid and our metabolism and, and our immune system, you know? And so, so those are the main areas I work on are kind of like removing as many like chemical environmental exposures, maximizing sleep and reducing stress, getting in as much quality nutrition as we can. And then I can also, I also work on you know, finding out if they have any lab abnormalities, like are, are there, do, do we have some underlying thyroid conditions going on or um, are we depleted in certain key um, nutrients that we need to, to have these functions go well? And so, so those are kind of the main things that I would consider, you know, with, with functional medicine. And so, you know, and I get to spend time with people. Um, when I worked mm -hmm. in, in, in the clinic, you have 10 or 15 minutes to see someone and figure out what's going on. And oftentimes that ends up in writing a prescription and there's no other. But really, but really that time isn't enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so now I actually get to figure out, like I get to spend an hour or more with, with right. my clients each time I meet with them and really get to know them and, and understand like, because it's so simple for someone to say, like if someone's trying to lose weight or something, We'll just eat less and exercise more, but that's really not, there's so much more that goes into that and into health than, than just eating and exercising so much more. And so I really get to get into all the areas with people like, why are they having a hard time eating a certain way? Like why, you know, why is it, is it an under some other underlying thing that they, maybe they have something that they feel about themselves or something that they associate with food or something else, you know, that, that, you know, they're not getting from their, their primary doctor. So yeah, so it's fun. It's fun. It's like putting together pieces of a puzzle, <laughs> and helping someone really figure out what's going Tell on. Me about I wanted you to just um, a bit about your cancer experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I was in college when I was diagnosed and um, so I was 20 and the cancer that I had, it was called a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so it's, it's considered a blood cancer because uh, it affects the immune system. And so it, it started in a lymph node under my left arm. And when I first felt it, it was a really, it was really small. It was like the size of a pea and it was, and it was tender so that it caught my attention because I, it hurt under my arm. And, you know, it was around Thanksgiving time here. And so I came, I had a break from school and I came home and saw my doctor and they thought it was an infection. And so they put me on some antibiotics, but it kept growing. It just kept growing and it got more and more painful. And so I went back to the doctor and they did some more tests and still didn't know what it was. And so by that time, this mass under my arm was so big and painful that I couldn't sleep. I was in pain 24 seven. Um, so I ended up, you know, having to take some pain medication. And, and then when my, when my finals were done for that semester, I came home and I had what's called an excisional biopsy. So they put me to sleep and they kind of took a piece of the mass out to do tests on it, to figure out what was going on. Um, they knew right away it was some sort of a cancerous tumor, just by the way it looked. And, but they didn't know what kind it was. And so um, when they got the pathology back, of course, they got, they gave me the diagnosis and I was so young and just kind of naive back then that I just was like, can't you just cut it out and be done with it? And they, they said, no, that's not how we treat this kind of cancer. And so I ended up having to do chemotherapy, which is like the IV form of the strong medications they put you on. And um, so I had 
a, a big round of treatments every three weeks. And so I had an oral steroid I took for five days. And then I had three different IV medicines that took about probably three hours to get in my system. And then I would go home and I was really, you know, cause you always hear about chemotherapy and people getting really mm -hmm. sick and throwing up. And so I was really worried about that. And I remember going to bed that first night cause I felt okay when I first got home and my mom put a trash can on my bed and I thought, well, that's really encouraging. Like, <laughs> But, you know, I, I, I never got sick. I took, I, um, I took my nausea medicine like every, you know, so many hours. Mm -hmm. I never actually threw oh, up. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, I think my main side effects were I actually had a lot of muscle, muscle loss. I lost some weight, um, mm -hmm. not on purpose. Mm -hmm. I just lost weight. And then um, I had constipation and kind of some digestive issues mm -hmm. and a headache and just, you know, kind of, you feel crummy for a few days mm -hmm. after, and then your blood counts go down because it, the chemotherapy, it, it attacks your rapidly dividing cells, wow. and so, which is, which is why your mouth, you can get mouth sores, you can get heartburn, like why your digestive tract mm -hmm. is so affected is because those cells mm -hmm. turn over so quickly. And so, um, so it affects your blood count, like your red blood cells, your white blood cells, those all go down. So about day mm. 10, they check your blood and make sure you're not too low and too at risk That's for right. getting an infection. That's and right. then about, you know, that third week you start That's over. Right. And so I had, uh, but, but the good thing was after my first treatment, that tumor that was under my arm completely melt, melted away. It was like gone. Wow. After my first treatment. So the cancer the cancer that I had was very responsive to treatment. It was very treatable. Hmm. You're so and lucky. Had, yes. So I was lucky. It had about a 90% cure rate, uh, the hmm. kind I had. So very good kind. Um, obviously, I'm 24 years out. It's been till I've been fine. Hmm. Um, and so I had three rounds of those chemotherapies. And then I had a local radiation treatment to the lymph nodes under my left arm and then the lymph nodes right above it, which are right around your collarbone. So... Hmm. The radiation is totally different. It's a lot easier than chemotherapy was, but you get like a, a really bad sunburn on your skin. Um, and so you kind of just go in every, it's like a, a Monday through Friday thing. And so it was about five and a half weeks of, of radiation treatment. So probably about around 30 treatments total or something. Um, and so it really just kind of makes you tired, gives you kind of like a sunburn on the skin effect. Um, and you know, so then I, I finished all my treatment in May, I took a semester off of college mm -hmm. and then I went right back to school that summer and I was probably not quite ready because just cause I wasn't really, <laughs> like, feeling that great, but I just, I just was ready to get I back. To my life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I was like, I want to go mm, back to school. Right. I, I want to see my friends. I want to be normal again, you know? And so, that's right. um, and so, yeah. And so I, you know, I really, I did have a little bit of some issues after, like I would get something called pleurisy, which is like inflammation mm -hmm. of the lining around your lung. And so it would cause some pain and stuff, but it would last a few days and go away. And mm -hmm. um, I did kind of get sick a lot in the beginning, just, I think going back and being around a bunch of people, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I feel like I did pretty well. You know, what's interesting about this past year with the pandemic, it brought back a lot of anxiety for me because it felt very similar to when I was diagnosed with cancer because you don't have control. Like mm. just that lack of control of what's happening around you. Um, so, yeah, so it really, it really kicked up some anxiety for me. So now I'm kind of working back through some of that old, old trauma, yeah. Yeah. All right. All yeah. right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. Now, um, what I want to ask you, um, what are autoimmune um, diseases? How do they develop? And um, do, uh, are there any signs and symptoms for that? Yeah, so there's a lot of different autoimmune diseases. Um, the one that I had was called Hashimoto's, and that directly is affecting the thyroid. But there are a lot of different ones. I mean, even fibromyalgia is considered autoimmune. There's like rheumatoid arthritis, um, lupus, um, scleroderma, Sjogren's. There's a, like a bunch of different arthritis that are autoimmune. And then there is auto, even sometimes type 1 diabetes can be autoimmune. Um, and then there's a couple of different um, 
things that affect the 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 colon or the 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 digestive tract um, like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease things like that those can also be considered autoimmune so there's a wide range of autoimmune mm. things and um, you know the reason why I think we're having a lot more autoimmune and you're even seeing a lot of autoimmune things coming up in kids now that you used to not see because even things like asthma um, could be considered autoimmune all right so do okay. you have any you do you have any autoimmune boosting tips you can share yeah, so some really some really big ones for um for kind of helping and calming down the autoimmune is um, the main thing, of course, is going to be stress because stress is going to always affect our health because it causes inflammation in the body and all these things. And so anything that you can do to reduce your stress and one thing that I find is really easy is just doing some deep breathing exercises like once a day, a couple of times a day. So you can breathe in through your nose for like three or four counts and you hold it for three or four counts and then you breathe out for four counts. And so that really activates what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's your rest and relaxation state. So we want to be in the rest and relaxation state more than our fight or flight state, which is our sympathetic state. Okay. That's going to really just help reset the whole body. Um, so stress management is key. Um, drinking clean water. So I always have water with me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I try to drink about half my body weight in ounces of water every day. That's going to really help. Our body needs that water. I mean, I think we're about 50% water or something. So, mm -hmm. um, and then, um, I also try to get outside. So nature, fresh air, sunshine, our vitamin D level is really important for our immune That's health. Right. And so sunshine is our best way to get our vitamin D. It's, it's pretty amazing what our body does. We get the sun hits our right. skin and it makes vitamin D. And so that's our really a good way to kind of boost your immune health as well. Life is yeah. just beautiful. So one thing that I love to do is I love to go outside and exercise breathe deep, get your vitamin D in the fresh air. You get all those things at once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then as far as your food goes, eating as many plants and plants as you can. So a variety mm. of fruits and vegetables. Um, I try to get organic because organic is going to have less pesticides on them. That's right. It's like good veggie. Mm. Yeah. So, so whole foods, nourishing foods, um, you know, lots of water, nourishing your mind. And so, you know, like we talked about the breathing, uh, you can do prayer time, journaling, meditation, any of those things are just going to help us with like nourishing. Well, yeah. And okay. then, and then I try to also. Oh, okay. So now do you have, and, yeah. and the, just the last thing is, is trying to avoid as many chemicals in our environment as we can. So using more natural and non-toxic cleaning products and products for your skin and hair and things like that helps as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much. It's been like well, lipstick by mobile saving. Now I've been having a what well, you know, talk show with Alan St. Wensridge, who helps people resolve health issues with a holistic approach using functional medicine. She's also the host of the Cancer Recovery Podcast. Now, Alison, I want to ask this question. Now, um, what is the role of stress in the development of most health issues? What is the role of stress? Yeah, in the development of most health issues. Yeah, so, I mean, number one, stress is going to keep us in this... Um, fight or flight state and our body, the way our body heals is when we're more in our resting, rested and relaxed state. Because if we're, if we're stressed all the time, our cortisol levels go up, all these other neuro um, levels will, will increase. And then that causes a downstream effect on our body and our gut health and our inflammation. And then as well too, if we're, if we're eating food and we're stressed out, we are not going to be making enough stomach acid and things to digest the food properly. So it, it affects our digestion and absorption of nutrients as well. So it's uh, so it's kind of a multifactorial factorial approach of how stress is going to affect our health overall. Um, and oftentimes when we're stressed, 
that's when we are we are more likely to get sick and it kind of, and it actually lowers our immune system functions as well being more uh-huh. stressed out does so yeah oh guys now do you have any cancer you know, recovery program you like to share with my audience so we don't have a program as of yet. I mean, we have oh, our right. podcast, we have the podcast going, um, and I do work with clients one-on-one. So, oh, right. you know, so they, you know, anyone can sign up with me and, and I, I kind of, you know, meet with people once a week and we really, I go over their health history and I really start helping them figure out what their main concerns are right now. And then I work with them one-on-one so I can kind of tailor it to them specifically but in the future, you know, we do want to have a group course where we talk about stress and all these different pillars of health. And then eventually we'll have an in-person retreat and things coming. So, you know, so definitely stay tuned. We have a lot more that we want to do in the future. But for now, if you want to just get free information, our podcast is a great place to start. Mm-hmm. And then if you want more one-on-one care, you know, working with, with me one-on-one would be a great start. And then you know, I'm hoping in the next year, this coming year, we'll have more group courses and things like that for people to jump into. So, all right. So, thank you yeah. so much, Alison Wansbury, for coming to Lava Lipa Mobilis TV. Now, to my last question: How often can someone do an L check, especially for a woman? Are there any important L check to consider? Yes. Um. So, you, you know, I mean, I think typically it's it's recommended to go see your doctor once a year, and of course you know, I just got my mammogram done. So of course, if you're, you know, depending on how old you are getting your mammogram screens once a year, you know, you want to be getting your, your gynecological checks and things like that. And then I think it's really important to get, you know, of course your cholesterol and and looking at your blood counts and your iron levels. If we're menstruating, we're losing iron and blood. Um, So getting your iron checked and your thyroid, you know, you really want to make sure you're getting a complete thyroid workup because oftentimes, Thyroid disease affects women way more than men. And most of the time, about 50% of women have thyroid issues and don't even know. And that can be contributing to your energy. Um, Your, if you have sluggish bowel, like if you're constipated, that could be thyroid. If you're losing hair, um, your dry skin, you just don't feel right. You have a brain fog or maybe even some mild depression that can all be related to your thyroid. So that's really important to get that checked on. Um, you know, and if you want to go a little bit deeper, you know, getting some, some nutrient levels like your B vitamins and your vitamin D level is really important to get checked. Um, so those are some things that I would really focus on, you know, just to get, just to start with. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Once again, now, do you have any parting word you want to share with my audience? Yeah. So, you know, I just think, you know, this last year, if it's taught us anything is that it's, it's so important to, to, to practice self-care. Um, and I think women are probably the worst at practicing self-care because we take care of everyone else first. <laughs> and I've learned that when I do that, then my health starts to go downhill. And so I now have realized I cannot do that anymore. I have to spend, so I try to, I try to get up early, a little bit early every morning. And I do like this morning, I did a little bit of yoga. I did some meditation. Um, sometimes I'll do some journaling and, and before it got kind of cold here, I would go outside for a walk. And so we really need to make time every single day for ourselves. Me time. <laughs> yes, we, we have to. Um, whether it's reading or it's doing something that you enjoy, it could be reading a silly book. It could be, um, you know, singing a song, like whatever painting or drawing or, but just spending a few minutes. If you feel like you're too busy to do this, just take five minutes and Mm -hmm. breathe, just sit in a closet by yourself and breathe uh, and say some nice things to yourself. We are so, we're such a critic on our own self. Like, I mean, we wake up and go, oh my gosh, this, this and that. And we just start talking all these negative <laughs> thoughts to ourselves. So look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am beautiful. I am smart. I am loved. I am worthy. I am valuable. That's right. You know, just do some basic things like that and, and put yourself mm. here. Because when you start to shift your mindset around putting your self-care first, your whole day is going to be better. You're going to be That's better right. for your kids. You're going to be better for everyone else. You're going to probably yeah, start- let it lose off. Yeah. yeah. 
-hmm. And it's going to be easier to make healthier choices throughout the day. That's right. So that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been okay. lovely about you, Stephen. Thank you for hanging around with me, Alan Zewensrich. Thank you so much for having me. All right. It's a pleasure once again. I wish you best of luck in all your projects and your endeavors. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. All right. That's right. So thank you for hanging around with me. I hope some other time we can do this again. Now, I need to sign out. Bye for now.